Hello everyone, it's me, Evan, and today I'm going to be covering the engine systems for my MiG-29. So, this plane has a variable speed engine, which means that I can keep up with almost anything. Oops, <laughs> don't close the landing gear. <laughs> that is silly. I was looking for the cockpit canopy closing. There we go. So, as you can see, you know, I also have a, an engine for taxiing so I don't have to rely on the main engine for that. Now, let's get in the air. So I've hit Alt, and I can just, I've just lightly tapped the, the throttle. And look at that, we're not speeding up very fast. If I hold it down though, our speed increases, and as does our fuel consumption. So the original reason I actually fitted this to this aircraft is because that the fuel consumption is absolutely massive at maximum burn and so I wanted to limit that so I wouldn't have to cram fuel all over this thing as it is there's only fuel in the actual uh, engine columns there so and in this little drop tank that means that this thing can stay aloft for longer and it's also more versatile in that you can give yourself a little bit of a speed boost to sort of lock yourself in if you're strafing ground targets. So you can, if you're using physical munitions, you can actually, you know, get the momentum right without having to hard burn towards your target and increase your closing velocity ridiculously. <laughs> So it's very good for that. It's great for keeping up with slower planes if you're trying to fly formation. Um, it's good for stabilizing landings. So let's get, uh, let's go take a landing here. Oh, so see, I don't want to go back up to maximum speed, but I'm not really aimed at the landing, you know, <laughs> at the landing strip properly. So I can just tap it a little bit, which is enough to keep me in the air, but not enough to really get me up to a, a huge speed. So it's very useful for that. And we can come around here. Ooh, careful there. Yeah, you can see we can come about, cut the engines, and then glide our way down. If you need a little bit of speed to help yourself to not uh, nosedive, that's, it's very useful for that. So for instance, let's sort of kick it back. We go try and make a nice landing out of this. Okay, well that was not as nice as I would have hoped it would be. Um, I was trying not to use my extra lift thrusters so that it would be a little bit more genuine of a landing, but anyhow, you rarely land in brick rigs anyway, but it is useful for that. So I'm going to show you guys how I, how I made that, and also there's a nice little lever up here which actually turns back and forth with the engine burn, which is very nice. So. Let's show you how I did that. So this right here is our throttle sensor. It's pretty simple. It's about uh, four blocks, one, two, three, four, plus, you know, your engines, I guess, however many of those are. But it's not a lot to add onto your build, and it adds some versatility that you wouldn't get from just a standard on-off throttle. So as you can see here, we've got the sensor input to minimum is 0.5, so that would be that would mean 0.5 meters away. That's the minimum, that's the lowest engine power. And then 0 0.01 is the maximum engine power. So that's when this piece here rotates all the way in. Now you want your throttle bound to this and it to be at a slow speed. In this case, it's 0.3 and the angle is uh, 54 degrees. And that's because that this is at a slight angle so that it does not actively interfere with this when you're not using the throttle. This is somewhat susceptible to lag, unfortunately, but usually it's pretty stable, especially um, considering that there's only one actuator and it's not interfering, it's not touching anything else. So it's pretty stable um, unless you're in like super duper high lag scenarios and then you're better off not flying a plane. Uh, so there you go. Um, so we've got this, and it's proximity, of course, and it's bound to channel input 20. Now if we go, we hit X, channel input 20 is our engine columns here. Right in there. That's our thrusters. Now these thrusters are just bound to, uh, to 1 here, yeah. 
input scale 1, custom 20. And that's that's pretty much it. Now the other thing um, that the part that actually took longer to do was not the actual engines themselves, but the little dial up in the cockpit. So if we look here at input 20, you can see up there we got, oh, what's that? Something up there is at input 20. What would that be? Oh, look, it's a one by one actuator. So this one by one actuator has a 20 degree motion. Um, it's at negative 10 speed so that it will update as quickly as possible. Uh, it's negative 10 so that it goes this way in our clockwise direction. And you can see here I've marked off and maximum for the engine. This is also a seeking sensor, which means when it's not receiving input, it will return to zero. And that's that's really it. I mean, other than that, the, the rest of it's up to you and your piloting ability. It's a, it's a reliable system, and if you have a little indicator up here, you can tell exactly how much engine you're at, which is nice. It's, it's very, very useful. Um, and yeah, I hope you find that useful and informative. Uh, this has been Evan, signing off. Have a good night.